all night. I've been warning you about the dangers of being a follower. When everybody expects the same outcome uh, in the stock market, there's a very good chance it won't play out as expected because it's already priced in. That's why you need to be extra wary of the IPO cycle. We've seen this pattern over and over and over again. We get a deluge of new deals. At first, many of them explode higher. They're terrific. At the same time, they're flooding the market with new stock supply, and that supply ultimately drags us down. I've said it a million times. The stock market is like any other market. It's all about supply and demand. Too much supply and prices are going to go lower. The problem is when IPOs are making people fortunes, well, you know what? You tend to get a palpable sense of exuberance. Then when the deals start attracting less interest, the exuberance turns to hostility, and then we get slammed. We see this happen so many times. Look, recently, 2019. Uh, the latest IPO case, uh, one that was spearheaded by Levi's, a deal that worked very well, but then gave way to the likes of Lyft and Uber, two highly anticipated ride-sharing services that really burned their initial public investors. Once people started souring on IPOs, the market sold off hard in May of 2019. That was a brutal month. It didn't help that President Trump, of course, ratcheted up the intensity of his trade war with China. And while the pain didn't last, it's, some, it, it's something you could have avoided if you listen to me ranting and raving about how the massive Uber deal would be like an albatross around the market's neck. What makes the IPO cycle so dangerous? Let's look back at 2014, because that's the best recent example of what could go wrong. In the first quarter of 2014, the market was overwhelmed with a wave of new deals in two particular industries. The cloud-based software stocks, as is, well, those, those are the SaaS, software as a service, and the biotechs. Now, in January and February, uh, January and February 2014, these newly minted software as a service stocks and biotechs kept roaring higher and higher. But as the IPO floodgates opened, it's, I started to get concerned. You see, in a real bubble, the kind that can devastate a decent portion of your portfolio, you'll often get a slew of, in, of initial public offerings as companies try to cash in on the euphoria in the public markets. It's natural. But as this process goes on, the companies coming public uh, tend to decline in quality until near the end of the move. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, by the way, that's uh, what we saw play out, you know, actually in the big one, in the big one, the technology stocks of 2000, as tons of profitless dot coms rushed to come public. And we saw something similar in the first quarter of 2014, as profitless software as a service companies did the same thing. Of course, we had also a lot of secondaries. Those were bad. That's why I came out here and warned you about the dangers of IPO mania. I said that there was one surefire way to wound a bull market, and that's by flooding with lots of new supply. Again, when tons of companies start coming public, we basically get a supply glut in the stock market. At the time, I told you money managers would have to start selling the older, more established software as a service companies like Salesforce in order to raise cash to keep participating in these fresh face IPOs. And I also warned you that eventually this IPO bubble would burst. Sure enough, the bulk of the stocks that came public in 2014 with huge spikes ended up losing you fortunes in the aftermarket, and it took many of them years to recover. You had to be very selective at the time because most of those stocks were coming public with incredibly stretched valuations, even as they didn't have any earnings and in some cases didn't even have any revenue. The actual winners were few and far between. The dross vastly outweighed the rare nuggets of gold. That's what happened with IPO overload. It always happens like that. Even the best cloud stocks that came public in 2014, the ones that are now cloud royalty, took a long time to bounce back from that IPO overload. Don't forget, hundreds of really low-quality companies that came public in the 2000 era ultimately went bankrupt. 2014 wasn't nearly as bad, but it still caused a brutal downturn in the cloud and biotech stocks. And, of course, we saw the same thing in 2019. Sure, there were winners like uh, right out of the gate, uh, Beyond Meat, uh, Zoom Video. But for every IPO that worked, there was another one that quickly fell out of style with the Wall Street Fashion Show, the Ubers and the Lyfts, and, of course, most of the Chinese IPOs, which are always extra risky because China doesn't seem to have the same rigorous corporate governance standards that we do. The other big problem? When portfolio managers get excited about putting a lot of money to work in new IPOs, they need to raise that money by selling something else. And when there are lots of large deals, they need to do a lot of selling. So companies in related industries tend to become sources of funds. And if you believe you're going to make a killing in an IPO, you don't really care how you raise that money. This leads to fund managers who are desperate to raise cash, which means they don't care about being disciplined, but they're selling because, well, the price is irrelevant to them. And that's what helped fuel the market-wide weakness in May of 2019, right around the huge Uber IPO, just like it did in 2000, just like in 2014. Remember, the bulk of the new money that comes into the market goes into index funds now, and they can't participate in IPOs because these stocks aren't in the indices yet. The actively managed funds these, uh, that participate in these deals in, in the aggregate, well, they don't have enough cash coming in over the transom. 
uh, to get into all these big deals without selling something first. So the next time you have a big wave of initial public offerings coming, I need you to remember that it pays to be cautious when the IPOs are coming hot and heavy. The bottom line, as much as I love anything that generates enthusiasm for the stock market, and you know that, and nothing does like IPOs. You have to be extra careful when we get a whole wave of new issues. The IPO cycle tends to start out strong and generate a lot of euphoria, but then it burns out and all the new stock supply can really weigh on the market. Just keep that in mind the next time you get excited about a bunch of red hot deals and stick with Kramer. What's better than mad money? How about more mad money? Follow Mad Money on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to go one-on-one with Kramer. Austin's reaction. What other questions do we have? Ah, uh, I always tell people you've got to start with an index fund because I need you to be diversified. Get more with guests. How do you stay sure? And go behind the scenes with the most interactive show on television. If you can't explain in three bullets why you're buying a certain stock, don't buy it. Follow Mad Money today. You are super. You are awesome. I'm a first-time investor. Thank you for inspiring me to get in the game. Your show is the best. I am so glad you're on TV. I want you to know that you have transformed me. Thank you, Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.